Hey everybody, today I'm going to be viewing the uh, Bayong Toys X16 brushless GPS drone. This is like the third uh, variation of this, or version of this uh, Bayong Toys X16. They had a basic brushless version. Then they added an altitude hold, and now they've gone all the way up to GPS, which is a nice feature to add, especially consider this is not a very expensive drone. Now you can see a list of features on here. Um, that it all has on the box but it's not super accurate because this one that does not come with a, a little 720p you know SEMA X8C style camera but um, you know that's what some of them do come with but those are not a very good camera you can put an action camera on this and get much better video so let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and look over the uh, drone itself as you can see this one's got a little GPS uh, sticker here on this little fake dome this little puck this is obviously not where the GPS is located, it's inside the body. Um, it's got, you know, LEDs here on the bottom. Um, let's see, it's got, um, I've got different props, and you might be wondering why does this have different props on it? Well, the, uh, the stock props are um, these 8 inch props, um, they look just like my Cheerson CX20, and um, these are um, not the best props, and they're not very well balanced. And they use these little spinners that they give you, these little uh, nut spinners. You go on top, silver and black for each direction. And uh, these tend to fly off. My friend John had one fly off as he was landing. Oh, he was up a ways actually before he landed and it just fell to the ground. So I would advise you go with these DJI 9450s. These are dirt cheap. They're like $5 a, a pair. So 10 bucks overall at 10 to 12, depending on where you get them, but like Best Buy if you're in the USA. Uh, Micro Center, Target, they all carry these. Um, I had a spare set for my Cheerson CX20, so that's why these are a little scuffed up. These are not brand new, but they're not cracked or anything, they work fine for this. You'll get a lot better video if you attach a, like a GoPro style camera on it, um, because these are well balanced. And you get better lift, these are nine inch props. And I still get good flight time out of it. Um, here's what I put on here. This is a, a Xiaomi Yi Cam. Um, that I'm going to attach to it. This is actually a Bugs 3 uh, bracket off my uh, MGX Bugs 3. But it snaps right on the bottom of the drone and uh, you can then tilt it however you want. And you get a pretty, pretty nice video. There's a little bit of jello, especially when you're coming straight down, but it's not bad. But a lot better than the camera that they do sell for this one from Beyond Toys. I'm going to go ahead and take it off there. It's got an on and off button here on the bottom and a spot to uh, hook up the camera if you're using the factory camera. It's also got LEDs here on the top that will blink and this will blink as the uh, drone is looking for its GPS signal. Once it's got a GPS lock then these lights will go solid and then you know it's good to take off. You do have to calibrate the compass on this which I will show you before the uh, flight review and how you calibrate the compass because um, you want to make sure you calibrate it because obviously that's going to help, you know, it's, if you need to use return to home, it's not going to find its way back without a good compass calibration. Um, it does tend to kind of pendulum as you're flying this thing. Um, it kind of just tends to, to do this a little, but it will calm itself down. And it kind of almost looks like it's doing a little bit of toilet bowl also. And I think that's just more from loose PID tuning in the factory and you can't adjust the PID tuning. So you just have to kind of let it calm itself down. It's not bad, but it's just not really tightly tuned. And it probably doesn't have a very powerful flight controller in it. You know, this is more toy grade still, even though it's got GPS. But for a first GPS drone, it flies reasonably well. I don't have any huge gripes, though it can be a little erratic at times. So it's just something to keep in mind. It uses a, uh, a 2200 milliamp hour, uh, 3S 11.1 volt battery and that battery um, uses this kind of odd banana I don't know what they even call this type of clip but SEMA uses this on a lot of their uh, X8Cs this is like an X8C in a lot of ways um, but this one is a pretty good battery like I said and it gets a pretty good flight time I get around I get about 17 minutes flight time that was rather gentle flying and that was but that was a carrying the e cam for like eight minutes of the flight so i think you could probably get 20 minutes flight time if you're not uh carrying a, a camera on the bottom so a good flight time now it takes it like um three hours to charge up using a stock charger 
Okay, it comes with this uh, little, uh, you know, it's a standard uh, 3S LiPo charger. Um, this is pretty typical. WL Toys uses the same charger in a lot of their stuff. Like I said, it takes about three hours to charge this up. So it is not a very quick charge, but these do work pretty good at balancing out the cells. So it is a good charger. It's just not a very fast charger. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna just glance at my notes here real fast. It's got uh, two rates on it. And I like I said, I like to fly in the lowest rate for filming but the yaw does increase with the rates. Let's go ahead and go over the controller now. Now the controller is, it's also very similar to uh, the SEMA controllers um, in its build quality and look. It's got, you know, um, self-centering stick, which is obviously part of the altitude hold, even though it's got GPS. Let's see on the top right here, it's got, um, I'm gonna look at the instruction here because there's so many buttons on this. The top right is your um, your auto takeoff and landing. The eight button here, it was labeled number eight. Your top left is for your low and high rates. Then you've got here on the bottom, you've got some controls here. You've got, um, this would be for photo video if you have the, the camera attached to it that comes with it. This one down, it says this one is for camera. So that, may, that probably means video, this is photo. The middle button here is for you doing your return to home or one key return, they call it. And this, it does do an okay job, but it's not super accurate because the GPS module in this is not super high end. Um, so it's not super accurate, but if you have a decent amount of area where you take off, it will return, you know, relatively close to it. Just don't, to do it, don't do it in a very confined area like a high end drone. Don't expect the performance of a DJI Phantom an Altel X-Star or something like that out of this drone because I think $130. Let's see, uh, this one right here, 16 is labeled in the control. This is a GPS on and off switch. You can actually turn it off and fly it manually, which if you're having a GPS issue or something, you could do that just to go to manual controls because it could lose GPS lock. It actually happened to me, I think, the other day. When I got these, some of these scuffs is from flying it into my vinyl fence when it acted up on me. And then let's see, 14 here on the right here to the side, this is headless mode. So I think that covers the controllers, uh, the different controls. It does mention this uh, follow me mode and surround or circle mode. This is not operational. Um, maybe they plan to do it at some point. There's no GPS module in this controller. There's no way to connect a smartphone to it, so it can't follow you. It has to have a way of knowing where you are. So. They might have a plans in the future to add a phone. They do make a Wi-Fi version. At least they advertise it in the instruction manual here. But um, even that alone, I don't see how that'd be able to follow it unless it's somehow able to connect with the cell phone to the controller. So I, I don't know, I don't, it doesn't work. So just keep that in mind. To, uh, oh yeah, to, to start and stop the, uh, the, the propellers to take off or the motors, you do out, down and out or down and in. That will start it and then you can manually take off or you can do the auto takeoff. And the auto, you know, the auto takeoff, of course, is also the auto landing. Um, but whenever you do an auto landing, um, or, excuse me, when you do an auto landing, it will come down and the props will start, stop itself. Same thing with the return to home. But if you land it manually, you have to just continue to hold the throttle down and that will kill the motors. You can't land it and then do the lock prop as a lot of other drones do. It just keeps wanting to fire the motors back up and that threw me off. So you just have to keep holding the throttle down. Um, I don't think it will kill the motors in the air, but that's something to be mindful of as you're bringing it down because you don't want that, you know, that's the same bug SEMA had. I've not had that issue. So that's how you uh, stop it. Um, when it gets really low voltage, it will start to beep. Of course, the low voltage alarm, the lights will start to flash. And then you uh, want to quickly land it because as it gets to critical voltage, it will um, go to into its return to home at low voltage. So I had it, the first time I flew, I had it almost to the ground to land it, and it hit the critical voltage and it shot back up in the air. And then it uh, flew over, kind of repositioned itself and then it came back down where I took off. And it actually did a pretty good landing. I was next to my pool, I was kind of worried. It came down, you know, probably uh, five feet from where I took off, and then it landed itself and worked fine. So just be mindful when it gets low, if you get a timer going 17, 18 minutes, land that thing 
if you're worried about it doing its own return to land and then possibly having any problems with the return to land. All right, well, I think we covered everything here, so we'll go out for a test flight and go over the compass calibration with that also. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, I've got the uh, X-16 GPS drone out here. I got in the middle of the road, probably not the best spot, but I want a level spot where I can show you how to do the gyro uh, calibration for level. To do that, you take your controller stick, the right one down, and the left one to the upper left, and that will calibrate the level on it. You know, I'm not seeing it blink, but I believe that's, that's what the controller says on it. There it did it. Okay, there it did it. So now it's calibrated for, for level. Let's go back over here, compass calibration. I just got to pick the instruction manual up here. It's blinking there because uh, I think it's either telling me I'm moving it around or it's lost its GPS lock. I'm not exactly sure on that. It is a three-step procedure. The last times it completes before then, what you have to do the sticks in the opposite direction for the, uh, then the gyros. You do down to the left and the uh, uh, the uh, pitch and roll to the upper right, just the opposite. This way for two seconds. Now it's gone into compass calibration mode. So this way, now you're going to uh, rotate it three times, like this. And then you're going to do it three times, like a somersault head over itself. And then you're going to do it uh, three times this way, on its side. And I think that should be complete. So, that should be calibrated on the gyros and, and the uh, compass. So we'll go ahead and move it out here and uh, take it up for a test flight. I want to go ahead and attach my camera to it. Okay, I've got it. Uh, out here in the middle of the street and it's all ready to go and it's filming. Let's see if we can do an auto uh, takeoff. I think I have to start the props up first. Now an auto takeoff. It's not too bad. Take it up a little higher there. Get it out of the way everybody. And you see there it's doing a bit of the pendulum effect. Some of that's it's trying to correct itself and find its location and it's, there's a little bit of a breeze and the pids are a little bit loose on it. So that's some of it. You see it's calmed down now. So I'm going to fly it forward here. We are just in the lowest rate. But it flies pretty smooth and films pretty good in the lowest rate. It's just a little bit sloppy at times into the wind or when you're trying to brake. It doesn't brake particularly well. I see as I try to stop, now it's kind of toilet bowling for just a moment. I just kind of trying to find its position. I'm not convinced it's a compass. Some people think it is. I don't know. I, I, I can't say that it is or isn't, but uh, it, it seems to calm down. Typically, a compass being poorly calibrated, the toilet bowling will progressively get worse and worse as the airs exponentially become greater and greater in the flight controller to the point to where it gets gigantic circles. So I think it's just poor PIDs tuning. I kind of just let the wind blow it here from right to left a little bit and now it's holding its position pretty good so see sometimes the wind will blow it a little bit at first but it did a good job of holding this position there i was trying to show you how it doesn't if i don't break now how it kind of break there and like how it tries to fly back and find its position it does not break particularly well let's go ahead and we'll take it up to the higher rate here and that's the highest rate now you can see it's got a lot more pitch. The yaw is also quicker. Here's the lowest rate yaw, real slow. Higher rates faster, but when you're filming like I am right now, I think the lowest rate is better because it is uh, not gonna have as much pitch, so you're not going to catch as much props 
and stuff in it. I've got the camera just straight forward. I don't have it tilted up. With it tilted up, I teach you can make up for the pitch, but you also tend to end up with it getting a, a lot more props in the, uh, the footage. I'm going back to the low right now. Even with a decent breeze, the low rate's fine into the wind we and brushless motors. The lights are real easy to see. You get the red in the front and the green in the back. Pretty typical for the Chinese drones. A little uh, probably reverse than what most people in the United States would think. But uh, real common. Shearson uses that in SEMA. Oh, with these DJI props I got on here, I'd highly recommend these because you're not going to spend much money. You're just going to get a lot better video quality, a lot less vibrations. You're going to get more lift, and I think you'll probably get a longer flight time than the 8-inch props. You should. See, there's kind of toilet bowl a little bit like that. Let's go ahead and we'll uh, try to bring it down here and do an auto landing. Show you that. I'm going to try to bring it away from us so we're safe. That should come on down. You can't adjust the yaw as you're coming down there. See, it's a little bit rough on the auto landing, but hey, it did the job. There we go. Okay, camera's off of it. I'm going to go ahead and take it up now uh, manually. It's a little more sportier, the less weight, you know, and it flies. It's going to fly longer without carrying a, a, a action camera attached to it. I'm not going to take it up too high here. Probably should have taken it up higher with the camera attached to kind of get a panoramic, but oh well. Of the highest rate. See, it's much sportier. I turn it around, bring it towards us. Whoa, see that kind of <laughs> that got kind of sloppy on me there. So, I think you know, I would advise I'm gonna go back to the lowest rate. I think it's better than the lowest rate. The highest rate, I think, in almost tends to outrun the GPS, if that's a term. It, it has trouble getting a good GPS location on its lock as the flight controller is trying to catch up and get that uh, lock on that position. It just doesn't break very well. So you can tend to get really sloppy as it's trying to find its position. You can see it kind of came closer to that house or the, than I would have cared to uh, have it do. So I recommend the lowest rate unless you've got a quite a bit of breeze and you got to bring it back. Just stick in that lowest rig. You see here, it's, it's nice and stable. And it's doing pretty good. It's got a nice, you know, slow yaw. The controller isn't super sensitive. I mean, for a toy grade type controller, it's not as uh, sensitive to your inputs as a, you know, a high-end hobby grade, but that's to be expected as well. I would do a return to home, but I really don't think it's, I'm too comfortable trying that here in this residential area. Um, like I said, I've had no problems the time I did it, but I would not want to have something go wrong and have it fly into one of these nice houses. So I'm not going to show that here, but it, it did work perfectly fine for me on the low voltage return to home. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down here and show you how you kill the props when you land it manually. You just keep holding the throttle down and the prop should stop and they did all right so overall this is not terrible um, probably a bit harsh there but it's you know it's not the best GPS drone by any means but for the price range it's one of the cheapest in fact at this time of this review I don't know if there is a, a cheaper one the bugs 2 would be the other competitor but I don't think anybody's gotten that yet it's just being released so 
this isn't a bad option for a beginning quadcopter with GPS that you want to attach a camera to and get some basic filming, but be sure that you do it in a large open area if you're a beginner, especially if you're gonna use a return to land or anything like that, just to make sure you're safe and use these DGI props so that you've got good ones that are secure, aren't gonna come flying off like the factory ones. So, thanks a lot for watching and be sure to subscribe for more videos and have a good day. The power of the dark side, 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 side,